Smartboard Revolution Google Plus Community presents a Smart Survival Guide. I'm your host, Matt Granger. This episode, using instant questions for formative assessment with Smart Response, whether it's the clickers or the Smart Response VE. And we're also going to look at the question cycle for increasing the thinking. How can we use these questions and Smart Response to get to higher levels of thinking? So let's say that we're doing this notebook file. Okay, uh, 2 times 5, it means 2 groups, times 5 in each group, and the total is 10. Can someone come up to the board and make 2 groups of 5? And maybe a student comes up and does this. A lot of times then we do, okay, thumbs up, thumbs down. But you know how that goes. Everyone looks around and they look for the smartest kid and they kind of do what that person does and you don't really know what they get. If I have either clickers, my students have them at their desk, or if they have iPads or Chromebooks, even if it's one per group, actually, there's nothing wrong with one per group because the question cycle. So we've got a student, they come up and do this. So I say, all right, talk about it in your group, discuss, is this correct, yes or no? So I give them time to talk. Then I'm going to come here to the Smart Response button. Then here I have Insert Question. That one lets me put in a question with the correct answer, blah, blah, blah. I don't want that. I just want an instant yes, no. Is this student correct, yes or no? So I've given them time to discuss it. They've got their clicker. They've got their Chromebook, iPad, whatever and then I start an instant yes or no question. So I have to start a class. I could start my math class and make them log in or I could just do anonymous mode with Smart Response VE using the Chromebooks or iPads or any internet connected device. They go in, put in the assessment ID, since it was anonymous they don't use the student ID and they log in. So here it is, yes or no, is this correct? And they select. And since there's only one question, now they do submit. They don't need to sign out because we may be doing this, we may be asking more of them. So if they sign out, then they have to put the number back in so they can just leave it, put their screen down at 45 degree angle and wait. I go to the Smart Response tab. I can open that up. I can see here that all students have answered. I don't necessarily wait with these instant yes, no for everyone to answer because they've already had time to talk. So then I'll just do a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and then stop the question. I can use this insert into notebook and now we can discuss this a little bit more. Right? If 38% said yes that was correct you know I may say all right someone who said no would, would you like to explain your thinking someone who said yes would you like to explain your thinking and then at the end I would give them the correct answer or have someone who said no come up and redo it do you see the difference two groups five in each group, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then move on to the next one. Have a student come up, make five groups of two in each group. Have the students discuss in their groups with their partners. Is that correct? Five groups of two in each group. Come back in here. Since I already have a yes no on this page now I can come back in to my smart smart response tab I can start the question again it tells me that it already has saved results it'll lose this previous result that's fine we've already discussed it we've talked about it yada yada do you want to clear the results start this assessment yes it's the same assessment ID so notice the image is different now down here. Is this five groups of two? Is this correct? Yes or no? And they submit. 
same thing we're waiting when I have given plenty of time I'll stop this question and then we get the results and we talk about them that's one way of using the instant questions for formative assessment during a lesson the other types you have an instant yes no instant true false same thing instant a b c d so we're talking about the picture we're reviewing maybe you guys remember which one the magma chamber is talk about it with your partners where do you think it's going to be is it here here is it here or is it here which one talk about it with your group your partner your neighbor and then start an instant a, B, C, D. You don't necessarily have to drag these over since they it's already written on here. A, B, C, D. Which is it? They've already talked about it. Now they answer. Their choice is here on the picture and they can select. I give them time and then we stop the question. So that's how you could use an instant A, B, C, D. I don't know, we're, we're talking about parts of speech. What describes a noun? What, what is that? All right, well, talk about it with your partner. Talk about it with your neighbor. And then we can put in an instant text question. And notice, too, since I'm in the same file, this number stays the same. So they just enter their answer here with Smart Response VE. If you're using the clickers, you wouldn't be able. Text is not an option. When you stop the question, you would get a pie chart that would have, you'd have to look at the legend, so each color, adjectives, would be orange. If students said adverbs, they would be a different color, etc. And you could put that out and then discuss it. So that would be an instant text. But you could do an instant text here. So what would the multiplication sentence be based on this picture here? Talk about it. You put that instant text in after they've had a chance to talk about it. So what is the problem? and they submit. When you stop the question, the graph here with the legend, so you'll see each color would be, so if somebody had 3 times 6 equals 18, that would be a different color, and an instant number if, you know, working math problems. Maybe you're working on multiplying by multiples of 10. So you have that up there. Talk about it with your partners after they've talked about it put in the instant number it's going to be very similar to the instant text it'll just have a text box but you're looking here for a number and again when you stop the question your results will have different color for every answer that's given those are the different types of instant questions. Now the question cycle, it's an important part of raising the thinking. You can answer these questions without a lot of thinking, but you can also raise the level of thinking by following this question cycle. So you're going to ask the question, and it's going to come from whatever's happening, these instant questions. By the way, this question cycle, whether you're doing instant questions or questions that are pre-prepared in a lesson that you're using for formative assessment, this question cycle will help to raise the level of thinking. You're going to give them time to respond. You may set a timer so they know they only have a certain amount of time. You know your students. You know what would work best. For ELL students, you've got to give a little more time. But here is the key right here. Allow students time to discuss the choices. Let the students talk. When they talk about it, even if it's just a yes-no question, do you agree, disagree, true or false, talking about it raises the level of thinking. Now, whether this is a question that you've pre-prepared in a notebook file or an instant question, this is when you start the question after the students discuss because once it started they can go ahead and answer so if you start it right away they're not going to discuss once that's done bring out that bar graph or the pie chart and use that to discuss the results have students come up and defend their answers and here is uh, an article where I got the research for this 
ask that question, give them time to discuss, then start the question, and then use that bar graph or the pie chart, whichever one you have it set for, and discuss the results. It's going to raise the level of thinking when you're asking these questions. So if you have clickers, get them passed out. Let the students keep them in their desks. They can pull them out at any time and you can use them in a lesson. And by the way, you can ask these instant questions. It doesn't have to be in a notebook file. You could be looking at something on the internet. You can be looking at some other Word document or a PDF. Now you have to have notebook open to run the questions. Content can be from anywhere. When you're on the website for the math series, you can use it then too. You just have notebook running in the background. Use the area capture, capture the text or whatever, put it into the notebook page, and then start the question. So you have the content right there with the question that they're answering. But start using those instant questions. If you have clickers, if you have Chromebooks, iPads, even one per group, because the student's time to discuss, that's what's going to be key anyway. So even if it's the group answering, they've had that time to discuss. This is actually one of my favorite things to do with Smart Response, the instant questions.